Remember back when we put the Evo suspension in the giveaway Gladiator and we tore out all the factory components, including the front and rear sway bars? Well, in keeping in theme and just upgrading this Gladiator to make it really cool, we're gonna install a set of Annie Rock sway bars from Rock Jock. And we're gonna start on the front and then go to the rear. So for the front, we need to install the mounting bases first. We used a rubber mallet and popped in the bushings. And then we're just gonna install these bolts here. We've got a little blue Loctite on them. And it takes a 15 mil socket. The rear we're gonna leave just a little loose. Now we're gonna take some black multi-purpose grease and grease the inside of these bushings. Now we're gonna take that same black grease and coat the ends of the sway bar. And I'll actually start just by coating this one end first. And we're gonna come up here into the bushing. And then tap it through. Then I'm gonna coat the other end. All right, so now we wanna take a ruler and measure how much we have sticking out on both sides and even it up. Now on our Gladiator, the stick out was three quarters of an inch on each side. Next up is the anti-rock arms. Just line them up and push it in. Then you have these nice little machined end caps that go right up here and a screw goes in. Of course, throw a little blue Loctite on that. You want to level that arm out and install the arm on the other side. Now you want to make sure that you have them at the same angle. Next up is our clamping bolt. Slide that down from the top and install our nut. The driver's side sway bar link should look like this. We're gonna have the stud sticking in through the anti-rock sway bar arm, and then the stud on the bottom sticking the other way to go through the lower mount. We're gonna use a little bit of Loctite here. Now these came already pre-assembled. Uh, just as an FYI, one side is left-hand thread, the other is right-hand thread. Now we won't tighten the jam nuts here until we have the vehicle on the ground and we can set our final height adjustment for the sway bar arm. For the passenger side, let's do the top first. Now on the passenger side lower, we're gonna use a bolt with these misalignment spacers and they go on either side of this heim joint and then to be able to get the nut down in there, we made a flag nut, basically welded a metal tab onto a nut. And we can reach that down in there. All right, so make sure everything is nice and tight and then it's time to move to the back. So what is the anti-rock or what does the anti-rock do? I mean, we know that it replaces the factory sway bars, but why an anti-rock? Well, the factory sway bar is big and heavy duty, and it's designed to reduce or minimize the amount of body roll that you would get as your Jeep goes through the corners on road. The problem off-road is, is that that stiff sway bar is also gonna fight the suspension and not allow it to move as much through uneven terrain, uh, limiting the amount of performance that your suspension could give you. Now the Rubicon models have a front disconnecting sway bar, which allow you to disconnect it so that it will travel off-road. And you can get sway bar disconnect kits. You do have to get down underneath the vehicle and disconnect them when you hit the trail and reconnect them when you get back onto the road. 
So the beauty of the Anti-Rock is that it's designed to work with your suspension to maximize its off-road performance without sacrificing much of the on-road performance. The Anti-Rock was originally designed by John Curry of the Curry Enterprises family. In the past year, John and his son, Brandon, have taken the Rock Jock line of products and struck out on their own. It's a product line that we've been using here at Northridge 4x4 for many years and we're excited to have it here on the Giveaway Gladiator. So enough talk, let's just get to installing this rear anti-rock. Now on the rear, it's just like the front where we have a bracket on each side of the frame that's going to hold the torsion bar. Now on the rear, we're going to route the torsion bar above the frame instead of below it. It's, it's going to mount right in here where these two bolts are, so we do need to move these brackets, which means removing these connectors and moving them aside. So get your little fancy clip remover tool or just a screwdriver and pop these connectors up and out of the way. And then these two bolts here are 13 millimeter. So now if we look at our sway bar bracket, you have this little swedge bracket in the back. And if you notice, this almost looks two pieces cut. This is gonna slide in, and then you're gonna tighten this bolt. It'll pull this swedge bracket forward, moving this metal apart, and basically wedging or swedging itself inside this cross member. So we're gonna push it up in there, and this is a little tight. So sometimes you might have to use a hammer to knock these edges out or take a grinder and just grind it down a little bit. We can push that in. We see that first off the bushing is towards the back and we've lined up these two bolt holes. And of course you know us here at Northridge 4x4 and our Loctite, we love it. So throw a little bit on those bolts. and run them in. Now you want to use a 3 quarter inch or 19 mil socket and tighten this swedge bolt. And now we got to do the same on the other side. We're going to take a little grease and grease up our bushing. Then the same with the sway bar, just put a little grease on it just to help it slide in. Now, as we put our sway bar up in, and I grease the living hell out of that even. Yow! I'm just a gorilla, don't pay attention much. <laughs> Why is it every time, every time? I have okay, so be very careful as you slide the sway bar across the back because you have that yaw sensor right up in there. And those can be damaged pretty easily. So you just wanna be very careful you don't hit it. Okay, we wanna measure our stick out. And this is right at one inch and the other side's at half inch. So we wanna pop this in quarter of an inch and end up with the three quarter inch stick out. All right, the anti-rock lower brackets, they go right up against the factory housing and bolt right into place. Now for that ultimate Dana 60, we either have to modify, do some drilling, or we can just weld this into place. And I think that's what's gonna be our answer. That lower anti-rock bracket is designed to bolt right up to the factory axle as we just showed you. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite bolt up to the UD60s. You could do some modifications to make it happen. We just found it easiest to set it in place and weld it. So now we're on to the arms. So we want to make sure that we have the same amount of stick out on the sway bar on both sides. On our truck, it's three quarters of an inch. And then the arms are going to come right up and slide into place. Now with the arm in place, we'll take our machined aluminum washer and our bolt. So we did throw a little blue Loctite on the threads of the screw and then a little anti-seize on the coned head where it's gonna go up against the aluminum washer. And now we just tighten that in place. Then we can pull the arm down and slide in our locking bolt or our pinch bolt. 
This will pinch the arm together to keep it from coming off the spline sway bar. And now we just got to do that to the other side. Let's push arm back up into place. Take your sway bar arm end link brackets and assemble them with the sway bar links. You need to make sure that you get the high misalignment spacers in between uh, the brackets. So one on each side of the sway bar link. A little bit of blue Loctite and then we can thread that nut on. And then it's going to go up here onto the sway bar arm. So the end link bracket goes on. These two little spacers, they slide in on the back side, in between the arm and the end link bracket. And then the bolts go in towards the frame. Of course, we got a little Loctite on those guys too. And they're all three quarter or 19 would work also. So if you pulled your flare off to help you with this installation, you'll probably have to replace a few of these little white clips. And they just snap right in and make sure they seat all the way in. We ended up having to replace nine of the clips on this flare. The inner fender well has to be trimmed to allow the anti-rock sway bar arm to go through its full range of motion. So we take a ruler and set it right in place and then use a paint pen and you want to do both sides of the arm and we're going to go up to this second rib and you can see it lines up right with this bolt hole here or this indent for the bolts And now, the anti-rock arm, you can check for your clearance and we're still hitting just a little bit. Go up and down with the arm and it clears just beautifully. Then to install the lower link into the bracket, so slide your bolt in and then carefully get your misalignment spacer on. And then you can get your sway bar link and the other misalignment spacer. The key to adjusting the anti-rock arms to make sure they're in the proper position is you want the arm to be pretty much level right about the halfway point on the travel. On the rear of this gladiator, that's putting us right about the center of the frame. And we just reach in there with a couple of 19s or three quarters and just tighten the jam nuts, both top and bottom. Now, if you need to adjust it up or down, you can just grab that center rod and just twist it one way or the other. The sway bar links have one right hand thread end and one left hand thread end. And it's designed so you can just turn the center body or the center rod and it will either grow in length or shorten. Now it's pretty much the same on the front sway bar arms except what we find is we typically have that front arm is angled up just a little bit. A very important note is do not let your anti-rock sway bar arm and your your link to get into a straight line at full droop. We need to make sure we have a little bit of an angle here so that at full droop it does not try to invert before it comes back up. Now that's pretty cool. The anti-rock sway bar system by Rock Jock. And of course, they build them for all different vehicles, not just the new Gladiator. They've got them for the JL, the JK, the TJ. And of course, we have them here at Northridge 4x4. So check out the description box down below to where you can find more information on where to get an anti-rock system for your Jeep at Northridge 4x4 and also find out more information on how you can enter to win this beautiful 2020 Hydro Blue Giveaway Gladiator. And while you're down there, hey, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. What do you think about the Rock Jock anti-rocks? Pretty cool system, eh? Until next time, thanks Northridge Nation. Okay, don't lose your swedge nut inside the frame. 
And that moved it nothing. <laughs> blah, blah, blah.